Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will discuss the economics of transition cow feeding strategies. Let's look at some of the key issues. Certainly most of us heard about the broken cow syndrome, kind of a new term from Minnesota. Broken cows are a huge loss for two factors. First, we lose the cow before she's 60 days in milk. We lose not only a very valuable cow worth anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000, but we also lose the potential of 20,000 pounds of milk to be sold in that lactation. The Minnesota data, summarized from 1997 to 2001, would indicate 24% of the cows leave are broken cows. Many of these causes trace back to transition cows, and these are commonly known as high-risk cows, and metabolic disorders are extremely costly. Besides this economic issue, there's other factors that are coming into play very quickly. Just recently, new data from Arizona, Florida, and Wisconsin would indicate length of dry period. Should it be no dry days, 30, 45, or 60? Organic selenium just recently was cleared by FDA for dairy cattle. And finally, the new magic resource, straw. These are issues trying to address the economics of transition cow feeding strategies. So now let's take a look at dry matter intake. Here is a data set developed at the University of Illinois by Dr. Dick Wallace. On this one, it illustrates dry matter intake after calving. Let's go through this one carefully because several other slides follow the same format. The red line indicates healthy cows, 22 cows in this study. The yellow line represents sick cows, and there are 24 in this category. A subdivision of the sick cows would be the green diamond, which would indicate uterine problems or retained placenta slash metritis. Ten cows fell into this category, and the blue X line would be those that had metabolic problems i.e. displaced abomasum and ketosis. The missing cow would be a cow that had mastitis. Now let's look at our chart. On the bottom is days in milk after calving. So 5 is 5 days after calving, 19 would be 19 days. So we're looking at the first 3 weeks after calving. On the vertical axis would be dry matter intake expressed as kilograms per day. And you can see our healthy cows are reaching somewhere around 45 pounds of dry matter intake at day 21. That's an important question. Is this good or bad? Let's remember that for the next PowerPoint. However, you can see the sick cows in the yellow line are dropping down nearly 4 kilograms of dry matter. That's 8 to 9 to 10 pounds of dry matter. And then look at the blue one. Even greater, 5 plus kilograms dropped in dry matter intake. And when we talk about nutrient intake and early lactation, obviously the blue cows are really at risk. So let's get an idea of what is good dry matter intake. Here is some data from Ralston Prina by Al Kurtz that was published several years ago. What he did is looked at healthy Holstein cows. Again, we have listed by weeks after calving and then by first lactation cows and second plus or older cows. So let's take a look at week three. That's our database from Illinois. So first lactation cows should be averaging about 38 pounds of dry matter and our older cows should be averaging about 47 pounds of dry matter. Remember, our number was around 44. So even our healthy cows at Illinois still aren't meeting the test of this data set. This slide is extremely valuable because it defines what would be good targets based on lactation number, especially if you have these subgroups in a given herd. Our second slide follows the same format, but this one is milk production. This one is expressed in pounds per day. Remember, we had kilos in the last one, switching back and forth. So in pounds per day, no big surprise. Our healthy cows are reaching nearly 90 pounds of milk in 21 days, really milking quite nicely. However, take a look at our sick cows. They're dropping down nearly 20 pounds of milk, and our cows that had a metabolic problem are still further down, dropping down in that 65 to 70 pound range. So again, economically speaking, we are giving up nearly 25 pounds of milk because these cows are challenged or at risk with metabolic disorder. The next slide looks at some projections on this data set. Since these cows did not complete the lactation when other research studies, we had to use the DHIA 305 mature equivalent milk production. And again, we can see our sick cows were projected to make nearly 21,000 pounds of milk production, certainly above state average. Look at our sick cows, dropping down to below 20,000 pounds of milk. Our cows are retained placenta. You can see, again, follow the mirror of the sick cows, but again, look at our DA ketosis cows. Those 12 cows dropped down below 19,000 pounds of milk. So again, a loss of nearly 2,000 pounds of milk projected based on these startup productions in the first 21 days. Big economic losses. Our next slide looks at reproduction. What were the average days open? 
And again, we can see our healthy cows, about 110 days, average days open, certainly an acceptable number. But now look at our retained metritis cows, huge problems. You can see increasing to over 130 days open. So again, we're losing nearly entire estra cycle, 21 days. And some people will put this value at $1 to $2 per day. So again, another $21 to $42 that we're going to lose in the next lactation besides the milk we lost in this lactation. Finally, we look at body weight loss. And again, we can see significant weight losses. Again, on our vertical axis, this would be pounds lost in the first 20 days. And again, you can see our healthy cows are dropping about 80 pounds. This is about two-thirds of a body condition score. Fairly acceptable, but fairly drastic, actually. Then we look at our cows that had DA ketosis, dropping one body condition score in 20 days. Remember the older work from Cornell? Those cows that lose one body condition score in the first month after calving will have significant reduction in conception rate and pregnancy rates. So certainly, again, another risk that will show up next year rather than right now, another economic loss. So what should some of these benchmarks be for health disorders? This is one data set by Ellen Jordan from Texas A&M of herd surveyed Holsteins producing 25 to 26,000 pounds of milk. In this study, she surveyed herds across the United States from DHI record sources and found the following levels of disorders. 7.2% milk fever, fairly high. Notice we normally expect to be around 3 to 4%, but look at the range. Some of these high-producing herds were zero, good news, 44%, extremely bad news. We will just quickly scan through the rest of the numbers. You can print these out or study these a bit later. DAs, 3.3%, pretty normal. Ketosis, 3.7%, about twice the normal level we expect to see. But again, these are high-producing herds. Retained placentas, very normal, around 9%. Uterine infections, around 13%. Nonspecific downward cows, around 1% and dystocia or calving difficulties around 3.3%. We look at this and add up all those values. This comes up to nearly 40% risk of metabolic disorders without adding lameness into this total. Yes, yeah, some of these cows would probably be represented two or three times in this list, but this is a staggering number and a real economic risk on dairy farms. Finally, let's put some dollar signs on these metabolic costs. Milk fever, and this is some of the work from Dr. Chuck Gard at Cornell, would estimate the loss of being $334. This would be a clinical case of milk fever. Included in these calculations would be such things as lost milk production, extra labor to handle the cow, veterinary costs, treatment costs, discarded milk, milk production we never achieved. Canadian researchers would suggest about 1,200 pounds less milk because a cow has milk fever. Cows that may have to be culled, and certainly cows that go down and have to be sacrificed as downer cows or die with milk fever. So if you are running 3% milk fever and have 100 cows on your farm, that's $1,000 we potentially lose if we are running only 3% milk fever. And the numbers really add up. DAs, $340. Retained placenta, $285. Ketosis, $145. And the lameness value actually comes from Wisconsin, and that's $302, a lameness score cow of 4 to 5. So certainly these transition disorders can really get expensive in the pocketbook. So what kind of signs do we look for if we have transition management problems that may be related to feeding and management? Number one, a high incidence of metabolic disorder. Your job is to decide what is high. We've given you two different data sets. Number two, poor appetites. Cows have low dry matter intake. Number three, the prevalence of acidosis, such things as loose manure. Cows that have poor or irregular appetites, foot problems long term. Number four, a rapid loss of body condition score in the first month, defined as more than one body condition score. And finally, poor conception rate, realizing this could be related to some other factors, but certainly transition management is a factor that can affect conception rate. So what's the debate? Well, here's all the things that we'll talk about in the next several modules and you can listen to. What about two groups, close up or far off? That's changed in some situations. A number of people in the United States argue a one-group dry cow program, no changing cows, no grouping of feeds, no multiple mixing, just one group, and they tend to make it work. Number three, should we maximize dry matter intake before calving? A lot of industry people like this approach. There is some research here at Illinois and other sources that say limit energy before calving. What about feeding straw during the transition period? Should I be putting anionic product into the diet? 
Less than 5% do it here in Illinois. What about drenching protocols? Should I be feeding a specific forage to my close-up cows, such as brown midrib corn, based on the Wisconsin data? And what about feeding soy hulls or beet pulp to my transition cows? And these are all things that you'll read in Hort's Dairyman, Dairy Today, and other resources on this transition cow debate. So in summary for this module, what should we be looking at? Well, I think we're going to be rethinking the length of the dry period. More about that in a few minutes on another module. What about measuring actual cases of metabolic disorders? To me, that's a take-home message. Every Illinois U.S. dairy farmer should know these numbers so we know where to look to see where the weak links and the problems and bottlenecks might be. Number three, we must begin tracking cows to know when they are culled and how many days in milk. In other words, how many broken cows do you have in your herds that you work with? And finally, I think we have to calculate the cost of metabolic disorders. If we know it from bullet point number two, we may find on some farms we're losing several thousand dollars that could be dollars found. That concludes this module. Thanks. Have a good day.